We're starting with the prayer, yep. right? Yep. Yeah, we have all the same. Okay, good. Yep. The same now? Um, no, not, no, no, it's it's uh, we'll the, be prayer doing the, first, the, right? the prayer first, yep. right? Yeah. Yeah. So we'll we'll yes. Yes. Right. So we'll sing before we start the way right. So whenever you're ready, I'm ready. Five minutes. Five well, good afternoon, everyone. Thank you so much for joining us. I'm going to turn things over to Christina now. Again, thank you very much for being here. We are Ukrainian Americans. I am a representative of Protection of the Blessed Virgin Mary Ukrainian Catholic Church just down the street here in Manchester. And we would like to begin today's event with a prayer. In the name of the Father and of the Son and of the Holy Spirit, amen. Prayer for peace and freedom in Ukraine. Heavenly Father, your Son taught us, blessed are the peacemakers, for they shall be called children of God. At this hour, we fervently pray that your Holy Spirit may inspire men and women in Ukraine to become peacemakers. May they seek reconciliation and dialogue, repel the foreign invader, and end the violent confrontation and killing. May they restore tranquility to their nation and restore human rights, democratic principles, and religious liberty to the troubled regions involved in this war. God our Father, we beseech you to comfort the suffering, heal the wounded, and accept the souls of the departed into your heavenly kingdom. And may the most holy mother of God extend her blessed mantle of protection over Ukraine. And may each of us always live our lives as instruments of your peace. For you, Christ our God, are the Prince of Peace. And to you we give glory and honor with the Father and the Holy Spirit forever and ever. Amen. Amen. Thank you. Do we want to sing the American national anthem or just the Ukrainian one? What would you like to say? The Ukrainian one, but we're going to say a few words first. So again, I just want to thank everyone for being here, and I do want to recognize uh, Alderman Long, Alderman Sapienza, and Alderman Trishiani for joining us today. Um, we are here to show our solidarity with Ukraine, with the Ukrainian citizens, and with the Ukrainian community here in Manchester and their surrounding towns who have family members um, who are suffering from this unjust war. It's devastating to see the senseless loss of life and the war with no justification. Together, we'll be raising the Ukrainian flag to stand united against hatred and pray for peace. The colors of Ukraine, blue and yellow, currently are shown um, on City Hall in the evening. And they'll be displayed right here in a few minutes so everyone can see them when they walk into City Hall. Again, showing how the city of Manchester is, in, is united with Ukraine. So I'd now like to welcome uh, Chris Scott from Senator Shaheen's office, Mackenzie St. Germain from Senator Hassan's office, Colin Pio from Congressman Pappas's office, and Elizabeth Chanley from Congresswoman Custer's office to say a few words. Thank you, Mayor. I'm Chris Scott with Senator Shaheen's office, and unfortunately, uh, she's unable to join us here today as she's in D.C. Uh, but she did send along a letter that she asked me to read, if I may. Dear friends, I wish I could join you in person for today's Ukrainian flag raising at Manchester City Hall. Please know I am with you in spirit as we lend our voices to a growing chorus of support for the Ukrainian people in condemnation for Russia and Vladimir Putin. Thank you to everyone here who plays a role in this meaningful demonstration. I was appalled two weeks ago when Vladimir Putin abandoned diplomacy for a path of war in invading the sovereign country of Ukraine. My heart goes out to the innocent Ukrainians suffering from this unprovoked violence. Make no mistake, Putin instigated a war so he can fulfill his fantasy of rebuilding a Russian empire. Our response must make it perfectly clear to Putin and anyone who stands by his side that they cannot rewrite history and that we fiercely and unequivocally stand with the people of Ukraine in their fight for freedom. This moment calls for continued solidarity and not simply among the transatlantic alliance, 
that has countered Putin's aggression with swift and severe economic and financial punishments. People are gathering in cities across the globe, including inside Russia, to send a clear, unmistakable message. Only Ukraine can decide its own future. It's inspiring to see these demonstrations happening not only in world capitals, but also in smaller communities like here in Manchester. We must continue to show Ukrainians that the free world is with them, and, that, and we must continue to exhaust all avenues to provide the support they need to defend themselves. I was privileged to visit Ukraine in January and meet with President Zelensky and members of the Ukrainian government who are now heroically defending their home, their freedom, and their future. Now more than ever, we should show these brave men, women, and children that we share their conviction and their faith that a free Ukraine will emerge from this senseless violence. Today, I'm proud to stand alongside you all in supporting the brave and resilient people of Ukraine. Sincerely and signed, Gene Shaheen, United States Senator. Hi everyone, I'm Mackenzie with Senator Hassan's office. Um, she's also in Washington, so I have a letter to read on her behalf. Dear friends, I'm encouraged to hear about your demonstration today advocate, advocating for peace amid Russia's unconscionable invasion of Ukraine. Putin's unprovoked action is a direct threat to the people of Ukraine and to peace, freedom, and security in every corner of the world. In face of Russian aggression, we have seen the bravery of Ukrainian citizens on full display as they have fought and continue to fight against the Russian army. We can offer our prayers and compassion for them as we continue to work with our allies to counter Vladimir Putin. The United States and our allies have already begun to levy crippling consequences on Putin and the Russian economy as a whole, and we are also working to provide support to the Ukrainian people and to our NATO allies. In addition, I joined with the bipartisan group of my colleagues in urging the Biden administration to designate Ukraine for temporary protected status, and it is important that the administration heeded our calls. This allows Ukrainian nationals who are already in the United States whether for work or study, to stay here so that they are not forced to return to Ukraine amid the ongoing conflict. I am grateful to all of you for your efforts to support the people of Ukraine and to encourage a peaceful end to this crisis. The world must continue to act swiftly and decisively. Americans must also continue to stand united and with our allies against Putin's aggression in support of the Ukrainian people and for the cause of freedom. With every good wish, Maggie Hassan, United States Senator. Uh, Congressman Pappas also is in D.C. today, but he writes, I regret that I cannot be there in person with you today, but I join you in spirit and in solidarity with the people of Ukraine. The images of Russia's premeditated, unjustified invasion of Ukraine and its indiscriminate attacks on civilian populations are stark and heartbreaking. My thoughts remain with the Ukrainian people who have needlessly been put in harm's way by the senseless violation of international law and efforts to dictate a sovereign nation's future by force. The international community is united against Russia's invasion of a democratic Ukraine. We must make no mistake, the individual solely responsible for this suffering is Vladimir Putin. I strongly condemn his decision to invade Ukraine, and his actions must continue to be met with swift and severe consequences. He and the oligarchs that support this regime must know that these actions will not Excuse me, these actions will result in debilitating economic repercussions and further isolation from the international community. I know that every day the situation is changing and the scene in Ukraine remains tumultuous and unpredictable. Times like this make it even more important that we rely on each other and stand united. I find comfort knowing there is a strong sense of community here in Manchester and a firm commitment to the Ukrainian people. I promise to do everything in my power to provide support for Ukraine and the Ukrainian people during these difficult times. Sincerely, Chris Pappas, Member of Congress. Hello everyone, I'm with Congresswoman Annie Custer. Dear friends, I wish I could be with you in person as you gather today to show support for Ukraine and the Ukrainian people. Russia's illegal invasion of Ukraine is an affront to peace, democracy, and stability in Europe and throughout the world. The scenes of civilians killed, injured, and displaced are truly heartbreaking and a reminder of why we must always strive to prevent war and promote diplomatic solutions. The global response to this unprovoked attack has been swift and the calls for peace by so many nations and individuals has been heartening. We must use our collective strength and do everything we can to peacefully resolve this conflict which has already claimed too many innocent lives. I am committed to working across the aisle in Congress to support the people of Ukraine 
and provide resources to those who are fleeing the violence. We must also work together with our allies and hold Vladimir Putin and those who have aided his violent attack on Ukraine responsible for their actions. I am grateful to you all who are joining the chorus of voices around the world, including in Russia, who are demanding an end to Putin's unwarranted aggression and calling for peace. Thank you, standing, thank you for standing up for peace and humanity. Sincerely, Anne McLean Custer, Member of Congress. May I say something about your wonderful letters? I enjoyed them all, but can we ask you to go back to each representative and tell them we'd like a no flyover so the bombings can stop? Yes. 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 No Thank you. I'd like to welcome Natalia now to please say a few words. Hello, everybody. I'm Natalia Androsovich. Came 22 years ago from a, a city, Rivne, in Ukraine. Um, came with two suitcases, my husband and an old son. And looking back where we are at right now, I wouldn't um, do anything about what United States can offer me. Today we are doing the raising of the, our precious Ukrainian flag. And on Monday, uh, during the uh, <coughs> speech, our president, Volodymyr Zelensky, uh, mentioned about this. I would like to read very quickly in both languages. Ukrainians and terror are different in the world. Therefore, in our country there is no blood. There is no blood and there will never be white blood. Немає і ніколи не буде жодних свастик. Український прапор – це земля мирна, родюча, золота, без танків. Це небо мирне, чисте, блакитне, без ракет. Так було і так буде. Я вірю, я знаю, підкреслив голова української держави. And now it's in the... in English. Hold on. Phone. Oh, sorry. Sorry. There is no blood on our flag. There is no and never will be black spots, no swastikas. The Ukrainian flag is the land, peaceful, fertile, golden, and without tanks. The Ukrainian sky is blue, peaceful, clear, and without missiles. So it was and so it will be. Thank you. Thank you so much, You're Natalia. Welcome. You're very welcome. So I would now uh, like to welcome members of the Protection of the Blessed Virgin Mary to sing the Ukrainian National Anthem. Yes. Natalia and Lilia. And Julia. 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 All right, we're going to sing together. You ready? Ukraina, ni slava ni Ще нам братя молоді усміхнеться доля, згинуть наші вороженьки, як роса на сонці, запанує міми братя у свої сторонці душу тіло ми положим за нашу свободу і покажем що ми братя козацького роду душу тіло ми положим за нашу свободу і покажем, що ми братя козацького роду.
kingdom would come, that this would be a, a world that would be filled with your rule. God, right now man is throwing around his opinions and ideas, and God, we know that that is a broken way to live. God, we know that your way is righteousness and goodness. God, so may your will be done. May your kingdom come soon, Father. God, we ask that you would provide the means, the medical needs, the physical needs, the the water, the food, all of these things, God, that our friends, that our family in Ukraine is, are so longing for, God, just miraculously provide for them. God, we ask that in the midst of this hard, hard situation that the Ukrainian people would not turn towards anger and hatred, but would turn towards love, that they would forgive their enemies, that they would have no hatred towards them, and that you would do a great work in their hearts. God, we ask that in the name of your Son, Jesus, that these things would be done not because of who we are, but because of him. And it's in his name we pray. Amen. Amen. I'll pray in Ukrainian. Submit your 18 says that we're together together, and we ask our Father 